with uh, Quinn Beastwood. We're doing arms today with uh, Dory and the one with there. So let's get straight to it. This is my working set for bicep. I'll do a uh, all out set. Failure, fast failure. Drop. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Go down to maybe like uh, 50. I do them really slow, even on the way negative, very slow. Push hard and then slow, yeah. That's it. Then when it gets super hard, you bend over and you do partials. Partial. That's it. That's it. Maybe reps. is pretty cool. To go past failure, you can just do it by yourself. You do your skull crushers, then when you can't anymore, you do negatives, and then you do close grip presses like that.
Come on. Let's go. That's it. Bit hammer. Yeah. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on, three more. One, two, let's go. Three, good shit. Good shit. Squeeze it up. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on, big guy. Your what? Always a failure. Yeah, okay, one more time. Oh, really? to drop it. Oh. It'll pose there. Boom. Pick him up. Swing it up with the negative. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, swing it up. Okay, two more, two more. Up. Hold it, yeah. Again, up. Good, 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 good. That's it. That's it. So there, there's no machine dip here. So instead, uh, Queen had the idea of doing the little press down on the machine here. And John Meadows actually showed me that a while, a long time ago, and it's pretty good. So we'll do a drop on that for the eye.
Yeah. Go ahead. It's a sick shot for you. I try. Let's see. Work. Boom. That's all I got for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. All right, so I recorded this uh, workout with my phone actually, because I forgot my SD card <laughs> in my laptop. How how, how are you guys workout? Was it good? It was great. Yeah. Good arm possible. Good arm pump, yeah. And um, so a little backstory on the Quint there. He he won. Which show did he win? He won the natural nationals. The national nationals. Then he he would, did the thing in Spain, right? Yeah. Then he went in Spain. He didn't accept his pro card, so I guess he competed at the world championships okay. in Spain. Yeah. So he's got. Where blessing. That oh, blessing. Uh, do I do what we do? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> sorry if I messed up your name. So yeah. So he has, Quint has a lot of potential. We met him at the Fuad show there, and. Um, I was like, wow, this guy just got his pro card, just like a 23-year-old like that. Yeah, 6'2". So I, I asked him, hey, who, who's like coaching you and stuff? So I nobody, and then we just, uh, we're just going to get him on board with, you know, with our team and stuff and just help him out reach his potential. Because uh, one thing I learned from Dorian and uh, I like to do is that it's good in life to give back, right? That's right. So uh, closing the loop, the loop is giving back. And so we're helping him out, and it's pretty. I think it's motivating for 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 us well for me at least to like train, train with like the next thing you know like now, now the thing is like i was 22 year old one time but now i'll be 31. I, I still feel like i'm a young guy for some reason but uh like guys like that are the, the next generation future. the future so it's pretty cool to be part of the future at the same time and motivate it and you know and shape shape up like uh the next generation, the next generation i guess yeah and uh you know so I'm very happy to uh, be able to help him out with the Dorian there. And Noah for moral support. <laughs> right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's cool. And uh, now I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna go home and eat. I'm gonna do, uh, uh, the workout is done. It was a good workout. It wasn't a John Meadows workout. It was a Antoine workout. <laughs> but uh, those workouts are good too. Antoine workouts are good. We did a high intensity, so warm ups. The first exercise we did more warm ups, but then after that we did one warm up and then one out, all out set. It's uh, high intensity. Maybe you should call it high density. You know, rename it and then make money from the idea of like Mike Mentzer, <laughs> like everybody does. I'm kidding. So. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but not really. But not really. <laughs> So yeah, let's just go home and uh, do the rest of the day there. And um, are we doing a Q&A after this video? Yeah, we'll do a Q&A. Yeah, we'll do Q&A. So actually, this is going to go into a Q&A right now. One, two, three, Q&A. Ah, Q&A. Q&A. Okay. I was watching Altered Carbon. If you guys have any good series, you want to let me know. Just comment below. Series, Netflix, Netflix and Flex. Uh, okay. 
let's do this Dorian so I asked again for the Q&A on my Instagram this all the questions are from Instagram DMs and I asked the uh, I told people hey we're, I'm doing Q&A with Dorian so give me some questions so let's start <clears throat> Hello champ, I would like to know how to bring up lagging body parts like upper chest and quads. I think uh, for upper chest inclines are good. Sometimes high inclines are good, but sometimes going too high is gonna be more delts, right? Yeah. So it's you gotta find like the way a way to really work your chest. And I think the the more your chest will get bigger, lower. It's, it's good the upper part is gonna be big, bigger yeah, anyway, a right? A lot of times people with a weak chest to sometimes have dominant shoulders and when they press they'll actually allow their shoulder to come forward, yeah. rotate forward. You want to keep your shoulders back. Yeah. Scapula back and push through the chest. Yeah, a good, a good way to do that, to fill your chest is that you you start your, your workout with the pre-exhaust like 7 sets of 12 on cable crossovers and get, get ready pumped up. And then you do your presses. You, get, you might have a better mind muscle yeah, connection. Always remember to keep your shoulders back when you're doing like incline presses yeah. to engage the upper chest. Yeah, and for the quads, there's a lot of things you can do. I think what I would do is I would have like a, a, a crazy leg, a qu crazy leg workout with quads mainly, and then have another one that's like mainly hams but more pump, and then with a little bit of quad in there twice a week. And if that doesn't work, go just do once a week. Because everybody's different. All right. So, the other question was by Dada Fifth. And this one is by Johnny Kalal, loyal client Johnny Kalal. Products or food for proper gut health and digestion? That's for you. Uh, products or food for proper gut. I would say both. I mean, I'd always recommend using like a really, really good uh, live probiotic. Um, you know, at least, uh, I use a really strong one. Um, but yeah, anything that's over 50 billion, you know, live probiotics I would use. Um, and other than that, I mean, sometimes people, like a lot of people might, uh, suffer from like acid reflux or heartburn, things like that. And a lot of times it's actually their gut is not pr producing enough acid, um, so you can actually supplement with like uh, apple cider vinegar with uh, cranberry and lemon and I would have that before a couple meals throughout your day and it will sort of you know set your uh, stomach acid so it's a proper balance which will allow you to be able to digest your foods properly mm -hmm. so if you are suffering from heartburn or indigestion that's something I would definitely recommend trying it's usually you diet I find one diet that yeah a lot of people suffer from heartburn yeah so I, I use the lemon and apple cider once a day right now I know more cranberry because there's little sugars in there yeah uh, but I do use um, I try to use every day um, what's it called sauerkraut yeah the sauerkraut is really you know high yeah. in uh, yeah probiotics so it's really good yeah and it tastes good for some reason I, at yeah. first I thought it tastes like shit but uh, I think it tastes pretty good yeah but I definitely think it's worth spending money on a really good probiotic you know there's a lot of crappy probiotics out there yeah but I uh, stick with a really high quality one. maybe after my show should do that yeah, that's yeah. really, really good. Yeah, because I heard of the gut flora. It's like you pretty much you are what you eat, and you're there's like a whole ecosystem with the bacteria that they help become who you are. And sometimes your mood can change. And there's even like a, a bacteria I think that goes into people that makes people want to want to go faster on motorcycles. You heard about that Sorry, one? No. So no. people, they, there's like a gene that comes from the cat. The mice give it to the cat, the cat shits on the ground, and then the people contact it with through cats, and then they, their behavior changes, they become more adrenaline-seeking people. Wow. And they, they are more prone to accidents on the road. Yeah. So, which is weird, right? Anyways, that's a... No, so, something else to consider, too, though, with, like, you know, your gut health is, like, you know, as bodybuilders, athletes, everyone's spending so much money on supplements, on eating protein, large amounts of protein, and if your body isn't absorbing or digesting these foods properly, you know, essentially you're wasting your money so it's definitely mm -hmm. something good to spend your money on that's true good to know uh this one is by prince coordinator i watched some of i watched one of thomas d lauder's video where he mentioned that caffeine makes us resell some muscle glycogen back into the bloodstream so would it make me more susceptible to fat gain if i drink coffee after my post-workout carb meal 
I, I actually personally have no clue. Um, you know, I don't know everything and I'm not a doctor and I've actually never come across that myself. So I'm not sure. I would have to do further research to uh, yeah, know, I never heard you, of that. give you an answer on that one. I know I like coffee and yeah. I drink coffee twice a day. Yeah, once in the morning and once before cardio. Yeah. And I, I just, I just like, like it because it stimulates me enough for, for to maybe sweat more during cardio and wake up in the morning. And uh, I've lost body fat pretty well. So I don't yeah, think it's stopping You can me. suffer from adrenal gland if you overdo it over a long period of time, but I've never heard that. No. Yeah. Okay, next question. Sorry, did I say adrenal gland? Adrenal gland? Adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue. <laughs> Kev Chap 91 is asking, what's your opinion on white fish versus egg whites? Um, as far as like on a contest prep diet, I would say both are good. You could do either or. Um, I prefer to stick with, uh, you know, the the white fish. I just feel like egg whites are maybe missing some amino acids since you're removing mm. the the, the, yolk. the yolk out of it, and they're naturally a little higher in sodium too. So I wouldn't recommend having egg whites like two, three times a day. Um, mm. But both are good and both are interchangeable. Mm. But uh, if I had to pick one or the other, I would do the white. I fish. think what's similar is that both have no fat. Yeah, right. both are like a, a you know high protein, low fat. Yeah. So I think if you have, like for me, for breakfast, uh, there I put a cup of egg whites in my oats, then I cook it in the microwave, and I, I make some kind of like oat mix with that. And uh, you couldn't do that with white fish and oatmeal, no, right? No. That would be disgusting. Yeah. So I think um, egg whites is more, you can make egg whites taste more than just one thing. White fish is stuck with the same taste. Yeah. Cod, white fish, and then you can, you sweat it. The other day, Doran told me, no, it's, it's Adam. He came in the car and said, hey, did you just eat tuna? I said, no. He's like, oh, cause it smells like fish. Like, they said, yeah, don't the one said, yeah, because he eats fish all the time. Cause I, didn't, it out. I was sweating fish. Like, I didn't even know. Like, I walk around smelling like a, like a fisherman. <laughs> That's okay. Um, okay. This one, he has two questions. One that's too complicated with numbers and stuff. And I, I hate those. So, Benjamin B. Jamun, sorry. We're going to answer your first question. But we're going to answer the other one, which is, when do you think is a good time to have a cheat meal and how do you how to engage that during the week? Hmm. A good time to have a cheat meal. I think it's two ways of looking at it. One is when people are dieting, um, sometimes they just need it mentally, um, just to sort of reset, refocus. Um, they're going nuts in their head. Hmm. Um, so mentally, and then like, uh, yeah, I mean for their bodies, um, if like. You know, it depends on the person, but some people burn through calories really fast and you can't fill them up enough with real food. Um, so, you know, that requires a cheat meal. Um, but I do always think like, you know, having multiple days of high carbs from clean food is better than doing like one solid cheat meal. Obviously the cheat meal is a lot more enjoyable and a lot funner mm -hmm. and it's good mentally. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess it all depends on, on the person too. Cause I do have some clients where like every week in a contest prep, like clockwork, they need a cheat meal. They have the cheat meal, they don't retain water. Or someone else, you might do a cheat meal and they retain water for two, three days. So it's really individual. Um, it can depend on the person. Maybe from time to time, like me, the other cheat meals, where if I just eat double fries plus burgers, the dessert that I go out of there, I'm fine. But the last cheat meal, I kind of like eat. Yeah. But the pump was great yeah. after that, but it's just That's now I'm retaining water a little bit for the extra few days, so. Yeah. And the problem with cheat meals and clients too is I find like you'll tell them, yeah, go have a burger and fries. And they don't just go have a burger and fries. It's hard to shut it off when yeah. you have that. You know, they go home and they end up eating more snacks and more food. and. You know, so I know myself from personal experience because I did that when, yeah, yeah, you know, I had coaches, yeah. But it's pretty cool because every at my last out. all my cheat meals I've been around my coach, so he knows what I've been doing, so there's no surprise. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm retaining eight pounds of water, but you just had a one burger, it's impossible. <laughs> so, okay, next question at Barbarian What do you do when you feel like you've hit a plateau in terms of fat loss, even with carb cycling? Do you do a deeper deficit? Do you do more cardio? Basically crossing the point of being what most people consider ripped and lean to get to the shredded part. I think you have to figure out where where you are in your sort of prep or your journey 
and see how you know hard you've been dieting like quite often times if i've been dieting someone really hard for a long period of time and i've been steadily increasing cardio and steadily decreasing carbs um, and they kind of come to a plateau sometimes um, what i'll do for a period of time to get things moving is actually for a couple days maybe like four or five days actually start increase increase their food you know over the course of four or five six days and sometimes that will get their metabolism revving um, there's lots of different techniques you can do um, but generally i never really have had any issues with a client hitting a serious plateau um, to think about it mm -hmm. like you know we haven't had any Pla uh, no. no plateaus if you if you plan your your preparation properly and you i don't think you should ever overdo like you never want to start a prep and be like eight weeks out or 10 weeks out and be doing two hours of cardio and eating 80 grams of carbs. Because what are you gonna do when you get to six weeks out and you're not making any more progress? So you wanna allow you know, enough room in your prep with calories and cardio to be able to you know, make proper adjustments. Mm -hmm. I, I found that when you added um, the higher carb days that had like barely any fats in it, I became more hungry. And I started using carbs more efficiently. Burning through them. Yes, yeah, and then I was like able to eat more food. So there's lots of different techniques you can do. But the important thing is don't start your prep with crash too little, diet. Yeah, crash diet or too little of calories because you'll have nowhere to go. Yeah. All right, next question. The real M. Fuller is asking uh, to me Is this the best shape you have been? And who will you could be competing against in Toronto in 12 days? Uh, it's definitely the best shape I've been, by far. Um, it's not even close. I think I've, I've had good, good pictures and good pumps in the past. In the past, good prep, but I've never been this hard, ever. And this, uh, I mean, it's like my muscles are, are are like a lot better now. And um, I think it's a lot of things combined. The Doran's coaching, and just 15. I've been training for 16 years, pretty much. You know, even when I was in rehab, I was training in the rehab gym. So it's like 16 years of like lifting heavy weights, plus now taking a break from everything and then doing the comeback. I think right now, just my everything is 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 good. It's the best. And I'm gonna compete against. Um, I was I knew that the guys from New York Pro who didn't win would probably try to come to Toronto. So I you want I know Juan Morel is doing it, and I, now if you, I'll show you something funny. Okay. Juan Morel as my background for my phone to motivate me. So I know he's doing it. Maybe uh, other guys will do it from the Cali or whatever. But um, it, it really doesn't matter because if you know if I know if I know somebody that's that, that good is gonna do it, it's just gonna make me work even harder. So I'm I'm already giving my hundred percent. So now it's just it just makes things it just makes my focus and motivation easier to give my hundred percent. So I'll, I'll be there at my best. So it doesn't matter who's going to be there because it, it's already it's already a win for me because I'm in my best shape ever, right? And uh, right. I'm able to like share that with you guys and help people and and uh, where I was two years ago or even a year ago compared to now, it's like it's already a victory for me. Yeah, it's amazing. And then next year we have 15 pounds of muscle, and then <laughs> I have no choice to win. <laughs> uh, Wade, you. QBA is asking, hey Antoine, mad respect brother, been following you since your early days of YouTube. My question is, for a natural lifter, which is better to, to be a for a fuller yet shredded look, how you carb diet with cardio or low carb with minimum cardio? I tried higher carb with cardio and I'll see it looked like shit. I work 10 hours a day. My only guess is with cardio, cardio and weightlifting. I guess my body is having higher level of cortisol, blah, 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 blah. Good luck on stage. Yeah, I think if you're, he's a natural, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think with a natural athlete, I think really paying attention to the, you know, the stress on your body would be really important, like you mentioned cortisol. So I think, you know, allowing a longer period of time for you to diet and focus on making small body fat changes week to week, you know, a half a pound to a pound per week, do it very slowly so you can retain as much muscle mass as, as you can because, you know, you don't have anything that's helping you, like... You know, guys that are using, you know, gear, you know, they can drop three, four pounds or, 
you know, not lose any, any muscle mass because they're enhanced. So you want to take it really slow to retain as much muscle mass as possible. And, uh, you know, don't overdo the cardio, nothing extreme. Just take it, take it slow and make make adjustments as necessary. That's good. This one is by Captain GM, JMM. For a person who is able to attend the gym every day, mostly like two or three times per week, what kind of diet will lose fat while minimizing muscle loss? If I was only, if, so you're only able to train two, three times a week. So on the days you train, I would, uh, I would make sure maybe those days are like high carb days for you to fuel your training. Um, and on the days that you're not training, I would cut the carbs way down. Um, that way you have a good balance of, uh, you know, being fuller on the days you're training and while still, you know, being in a lower calorie deficit. So you're able to, you know, stay leaner and not put on body fat. Yeah. But it's kind of weird. You can't have a work 30 minute workout every day though if you get like a pair of dumbbells you can do arms at home 30 minutes so you could do legs in the gym back at the gym yeah. chest at the gym arms and delts at home and then you do 30 minutes of bike at home so you gotta really see if, if your excuses are really just excuses so because you sometimes you gotta choose it's either excuses or results which one are you gonna choose yeah the results or the excuses yeah but if you can't make it to the gym i mean you can only go three times a week yeah, you got to make sure those days that you're not training because you're training, you know, not very frequently, your carbs or calories are, you know, in a much lower uh, range. So go to Kijiji and get a pair of dumbbells for, you, for your house. <laughs> Come on, I would never be able to train just two, three times a week. I would go crazy. But then again, it's like it's my job and passion, so everybody's different. All right, so Ras Musbrock is asking for the Q&A. Uh, okay, wait. I want to know how about legs and cardio. Would you do cardio at night, like five hours after training legs, or do they need the rest? Or would you do cardio with the rest the day after they are sore? Personally, uh, Dorian makes me do no cardio when I do legs, well, especially with quads. Mm -hmm. And when they're sore, I actually like to do cardio because it just makes the blood move, move around. And yeah, yeah. When they're sore, like a, a low intensity, medium test intensity cardio would be good to keep the blood flowing yeah but obviously if your legs are sore the day after doing like hit cardio would be you know maybe a bad idea yeah and um also when they're sore you do cardio you can stretch afterwards to feel better increase the recovery process yeah and then some salt bath i've been taking them almost every night they yeah. really help for being sore i'm not as I'm not really sore anymore um the that animal jason is asking hey Antoine, you're looking very lean already are you guys worried that you could have peaked too soon great to see you compete again good luck did i peak too soon peak too soon I don't, I don't know if that's i've never even thought about that i don't think it's possible to peak too soon no i think what he means is that usually people think you got to be shredded one week out no, I think you're just going to get better and better. If, you, if you're shredded five five weeks out, I think the skin's only going to get thinner and the muscles only going to get more conditioned if you're able yeah, to stay. Yeah, you eat more food. Yeah, if you're able to stay in that condition, eating more food, um, given that your body stays healthy. Yeah. So, question to Dorian. Do you take clients and how much do you charge for coaching? Um, right now I'm pretty much at my max for clients. Um, but I have, however, uh, you know, I'm working alongside three other coaches now, Antoine, Justin Huey and, uh, Cody. And, uh, we are actually going to have a website that's yep. up. It's going to be up very soon, right? Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be used to the making. We just got to put the text information there and, yeah. and finalize the writings. But, uh, for the prices, it's, um, very quickly because there's more than one packages but the off season one is 400 bucks for the first month and then 200 bucks month to month and uh, i personally use fitlog.ca uh, and the fitlog app for all my clients and i you upload the pictures there the diets on there uh, protocols on there everything's on there supplements we communicate on there you put your weight every day if you want on there so i can see the evolution so it's pretty cool so i i try to have a very good um, relationship with my clients. I thought I try to talk to them every day. If, if they answer me an email, I respond to it to the email. Uh, if it's on Fitlog, it's on Fitlog. And Fitlog is pretty cool because it's one platform for just you can go there and take all take care of all your clients there. And uh, contest prep for eight week is eight fifty. For twelve weeks is a thousand. Sixteen week is twelve fifty. 
So the 16 week for 1250 is a pretty good deal if you're doing a show. It's like it's good Canadian money also. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty good. And the training program, I have one right now that's that's uh, that I created, the, the Muscular Overdrive program, 200 bucks for 12 weeks. It's every week is detailed. It, it, it uh, and the exercises in the 12 weeks they change three times, but every week something changes. So the like the intensity goes up a little bit, or the reps goes down, go heavier. Like there's a modification, and, and it's a pre-exhaust really hard like pump program so if you like the pump the program's for you so the information is in the description of the video anyway so let's keep on going clark qd is asking why are you guys finally going to come to australia you ever went to australia uh my wife's been but i've never been no no i've never been either no they would love to go i don't know if i can make the flight isn't it like uh Flight, a flight, slides across the earth. Yeah, <laughs> sixteen cool. hours. I don't know. It's, it's um, a long time. It's doable. You just meditate yeah. and you sleep. Rachel said she took. Uh, I forget the name of the airline, but she said the the seats were like unbelievable. It wasn't even. It was easy flight because the plane wow. was so nice. Oh, huge well, pods. Yeah, it's like that. I'll go. Yeah, if, well, we'll make it happen like that. Maybe yeah. we could get. We can do a seminar there, or maybe have a Callum to help us. Uh, it's cool. from there, right? But yeah, we'd love to go. We just need a reason to go because I'm not, I'm I'm not gonna go just to visit because I know okay at some point I'll have to go for something bodybuilding and it's uh, you know. parents of some sort. Yeah, yeah. So Omar Omar Casey is asking hey Antoine, I have a question for the Q and A. What are your most important aspects that need attention during the off season? So personally, the mistakes I do in the off season is I eat too much. I think too much fats. That's what I did last off season, and I don't eat enough meals, so I would eat like three meals. The frequency isn't enough. Yeah, yeah. So now, but this time I'll, I'll fix it. So you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta have a structured diet in the off season if you want to make great results. That's one thing that I'm gonna do this time. And other than that, yeah, it's easy to get lazy in the off season. Sleep in. Oh yes, yeah, sleep in too much too. Yeah, you, know, you gotta yeah. just prepare. Yeah, be be. You gotta be like a strict. The stricter you are, like you will be doing contest prep in the off season. Just with more food and you know maybe a little bit more cheat meals, the better it is. Because if you just if I do if, if I just go with what's comfortable, I'm yeah. gonna eat three meals and plus one big yeah. shake and snack. Yeah, if you're a serious bodybuilder yeah. or athlete and you're trying to make progress, you can't just wing it in the off season. It doesn't give you uh you know Yeah. I was winging it the off season, but then I went on prep and then I improved so much better on prep. Yeah, imagine you did that in the off season. Yeah, well this is gonna happen next year. So so yeah, don't make that mistake like I, like I, like I did. So next winter, I'm going to have my first off season. <laughs> Good. Uh, Straight Flexin87 is asking, question for you, Dorian. How many milligrams of test and trend a week is used by pros nowadays? Is it common for guys to use 1,500 milligrams of tests a week in today's bodybuilding world? Is it common? Um... I don't have anyone use that much. I'm sure there are lots of guys that do use that much. Um, but it's something you got to consider with testosterone is that the more you use, the more antiestrogens you have to use. And, you know, not only is testosterone hard on your health, um, but so is antiestrogens. So the approach I like to take is um, take less testosterone. So we have to take less antiestrogens, which in turn is going to be a lot better for our health. So I don't see what the point is in taking 1,500 milligrams of testosterone if you have to go and com combat that with a milligram or more of a Remedex on a daily basis. So I like to sit my guys at a, I don't know if you'd call it a low or a moderate range, but somewhere around 700 milligrams I find is more than enough. Um, and yeah, that's it for the testosterone. As far as trend, and what was his question on that? He just say, like, um, he wants to know how much people to use trend. How much? How many milligrams? I would say 50 to 100 milligrams every other day would be more than sufficient. Any more than that, and you're just going to get very toxic and very unhealthy very fast. Mm. A lot of people think that the, because the pros are big, yeah, they use a lot more. I'm sure some of them do. Like I, you know, I'm sure some of them do, but uh, I'm sure some people have certain genetics where they can take a lot and and stay healthier than another person. Maybe, yeah. but uh, that's not an approach I take. Um, I, I don't find it. Bene I don't think it would be beneficial either. I think your body can only use so much, and then you're just burnt. Yeah, you're just going to cause yourself to be unhealthy, 
and you're not going to be able to be optimal as long because you're going to have to come off because your health is, you know. Maybe that's why you see pros where they get super big and then they plateau and then they regress. They go get good for three years and then they just try to catch up and their body deteriorates. Yeah. And then you have guys like Sean Ray that competed for so long and looked good all the way. I'm pretty yeah. sure he had a different approach than using that yeah. much. I'm just assuming there. All right, okay, and next question. Check it out, Biceps is asking, what are your go-to carbs that your coach gives you? And does it change before and after workouts and timing? And does it really make a difference? Well, we you like to use the rice and the oat, oatmeal pretty much, right? That's yeah. Staple carbs. Yeah, right now, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like it. I like uh, sushi rice, oatmeal. And what is this question? And does it matter? Yeah, the timing with the workout. And around the workout, I use uh, I was using carbolin, but then I switched up to uh, uh, cyclic dextrin by Gaspari. It's called Glycofuse. It's the best one I've ever tried so far, for real. And I'm not sponsored by Gaspari or anything. It's just it's a cyclic dextrin that he made. It's a very good product. So, and the lemon flavored one is really good. But I got the orange mango right now. Yeah, as far as timing, the only big difference would be using a very, very high glycemic carb like cyclic dextrin mixed with amino acids, creatine. It's going to transport it to the muscle as fast as possible. Um, like a liquid carb like that can digest as glycogen in as little as 10 minutes. So, I mean, uh, yeah, that would be the only difference. But as far as like people thinking like a low glycemic carb or a high, high glycemic carb in a meal, I really don't think you're going to notice much of a difference. Um, in terms of burning body fat, whether you have brown rice or white rice, um, because once you've mixed that with, you know, your protein and your fat and vegetables and whatever, um, I don't think it's going to have any impact on your, uh, you know, your insulin levels. It's going to make any difference whatsoever. One car I want to try this is when, uh, obviously next off is it is potato. Yeah. I'll try it. I'll see. Because yeah. it's more natural than rice. Yeah. Right? yeah, but in saying that, yeah, like I do think like, you know, obviously brown rice has a lot more... Uh, yeah, but it blows, blows me more. Yeah, it benefits. That's because it's higher in fiber. Yeah. 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 All right, so those were all the questions. You know, and maybe one thing we can say about the carbs is that the only time you should eat sugar, pretty much, uh, is around the workout. And the, by doing that, you become insulin sensitive. So when you take your sugar, you sh your, your, your insulin goes up and it's like it absorbs all the nutrients. That's why a lot of people they take insulin and they because they they want that all the time, but that's a big mistake. You're gonna f fuck up your body, and I think is insulin is a physique destroyer. So I think by uh, to have the same effect, eat like rice or pot sweet potato with your meals, oatmeal stuff that's like more lower GI whatever, and then you have your sugars around the workout with actually dextrin. That would yeah. be a good way to maximize the insulin yeah. sensitivity. So that was all the questions for this q and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys uh, saw, enjoyed the high intensity uh, arm workout I did with uh, Quinton. Uh, more of him to come, more q and A's to come. Uh, comment below uh, if you have uh, some, some questions. I'll go through them, uh, through the comments a little bit and uh, I'll get Doran to answer some of them. Try to uh, answer some questions that have not been answered before and if you want right now there's a little card button click on the card button there at the top of the screen there's the other q a we did because there's a lot of questions you guys asked that we already answered in the other q a so i guess you didn't watch the other q a so now you have two q a's that you can watch well you just watch this one but you have another one you can watch so click on the button and um you also after um the screen is black, you'll see a little bit of the other little icons. You can watch my whole contest prep series from the start and subscribe to the channel. So thank you very much. And uh, Doran's info uh, information is in the description for his Instagram. Give him a follow. Um, there's a lot of nice things to come, like yeah, HD lots, subs. Lots of exciting things in the future. Yeah, you'll see. This shit is getting real. All right.